So a lot of you guys on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook have been asking me how do I achieve the image quality that I have. And so today I'm going to be walking you guys as a beginner or advanced filmmaker step by step through the process of how I achieve the images that I have using some of my favorite LUTs, the Phantom LUTs. So I've already made a video about the Phantom LUTs before, but after watching a few other videos of people talking about the Phantom LUTs and listening to you guys as you commented on that video, a lot of you guys seem to be having issues with exposing or you're not getting the same results that I'm getting when using these LUTs. So I think a lot of this starts with how you're shooting in your camera. So let's go through that right quick before we actually go back to the editing room and talk about how I actually color grade with these LUTs. So first you wanna make sure that you're shooting in the correct profile. So that is S-Log3, S-Gamut3, Cine. Now next you wanna make sure that you are doing everything manual. So that means that you need to make sure that your ISO is actually manual. You wanna make sure that your shutter speed is manual and your aperture is manual as well, as well as your white balance. All of these things are gonna allow you to have full control over the image. Now, if you're doing something like vlogging and you wanna use these LUTs, having something like your aperture be automatic isn't a big problem. You do wanna make sure that you however control everything else, which brings us to our next thing, which is the shutter speed. You wanna make sure that your shutter speed is double your frame rate. So today I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, which means that my shutter speed needs to be one over 60. And so if you're shooting in 24, that means that you need to be at one over 50. And you can do the math for other frame rates as well. If you're shooting slow motion and you're doing 60 frames per second, then you wanna be at 120. If you're doing 120 frames per second, you wanna be at 250. And the list can just go on and on. And after you know this rule, it's really easy to apply the math and make sure that your shutter speed is double your frame rate. Now the next thing is very, very important. And I think this is where a lot of people mess up whenever they're shooting. And that's actually making sure that you're not on auto white balance. Balance. You want to go in, you want to make sure that you're setting your white balance. Even if you have to adjust it later, it's not going to cause any issues. So if we go over here to our white balance, we can see that we actually have it on the sun. Now today, we're shooting in a very cloudy environment, as you guys can see. And so we're going to go over to the cloud setting. And that's where our white balance is going to be for today. Now, the very last thing is making sure that you actually have the correct exposure. There's a lot of things online that tell you to overexpose by two or overexpose to 0.7 or whatever it is. What I recommend is that you expose to however you want the image to look. So if you want the image to be bright, then you need to overexpose a little bit to make sure that the image is bright. If you want the image to be standard, then just make sure that it's at zero. Or if you're going for a more moody, cinematic feel, then, you know, underexpose the image a little bit. It really all comes down to what you want and where you're trying to get out of the image. And you don't really have to do any of those other things that a lot of people tell you to do, or at least I haven't to get the results that I want to get. So in this case, you can see that I'm already at negative two. And so today I'm using an ND filter and it's actually a little bit too dark outside right now. So I'm gonna pull this off. And now that I pulled the ND filter off, I'm pretty happy with the way that this image is looking right now. And so I'm gonna settle for this right here. Now for you guys who are wondering what you should have your ISO level at, you really wanna stick to your base ISO of your camera. So for the Sony FX3, that's 640, and that's also 12,800. Now, if you're shooting with something like the a7 IV, which is what I'm shooting with today, I'm pretty sure it's 3,200, and I can't really remember the low base ISO, but you can look all these things up and find them online. All right, so now we're gonna capture our image. We're gonna go back to the editing room and talk about how we're actually gonna grade this. All right, guys, and so now we're back at home. Let's jump onto the computer, and I'm gonna show you guys where you can actually buy these LUTs from. So right here on this website, you can actually buy the LUTs from Joel, and these are some really good LUTs. I do wanna say that I am not sponsored. I do not get any commission if you buy these LUTs. However, I think that they are really good LUTs, and so do a lot of other filmmakers as well. Okay, so after buying the LUTs, you should get a download link, which leads you to these files right here. So if you click inside here, you should see something that says S-Log3. That is the one that you want. So now you wanna open up DaVinci Resolve and the first thing that you want to do is go over to the color tab once you're in the color tab you want to go over you want to right click on any of these over here I'm just gonna right click on Sony reveal in finder and then right here is where you actually want to drag this folder from the Phantom Lux download over to here now once you're here you want to go back over here you want to right click and hit refresh 
now you should see a folder named slog3 now for me i've already installed them on here i've named it phantom slog3 and then i actually installed it here as well okay the next thing that you want to do is make sure that you actually have your project set up to actually color grade at the best quality that you can so to do that you want to go over here to this gear icon that says project settings you want to go down to color manage and you want to make sure that this says davinci yrgb color managed this is going to allow you to get some really good colors when color grading in davinci resolve so in this video today we're actually going to be color grading some clips from an unreleased video that will be posted tomorrow so if you guys are interested in seeing that video then go ahead and subscribe so that you can see that when it's posted tomorrow okay so here are all my clips i'm just going to drag them to the timeline just like so and we're going to go right over to the color tab okay so right here we have our first clip and before we actually jump in i want to explain the difference between some of these LUTs. so if i go to the list view you can see that there are actually two versions of the same LUT. now the reason why they do this is because the legacy version is a lot more contrasty compared to the regular versions so typically i like to color grade with the regular versions and you will see why here in a sec so for me i've actually went through and deleted all the legacy ones because I don't need them now if you're someone who just wants to drop these LUTs right on your video and not have to do anything else then you want to use the legacy ones but if you want the most out of your image then I recommend that you use the standard ones and then proceed with the steps that we're talking about today so the first thing you want to do is go over here to the nodes now I know this looks scary but basically you can think about this as layers like in Photoshop so all we're gonna do to create a new layer or a new node is hit option s on our keyboard and we actually want three of these so we're going to hit option s again and now we have three nodes so let's go ahead and name these nodes the first one is going to be LUT the second one is going to be balance and the third one is going to be white balance so going back over here to our LUT we're going to actually go over here and we're going to preview which one we want again because i did delete the legacy ones i'm going to go over to my regular folder so that i can only see the standard ones so right here we can actually preview what it's going to look like and typically i really like to use the east man or i like to use the eternal these are my two favorites but right now i'm really liking how the east man looks and so we're gonna throw that guy on now these are drag and drop LUTs, which means you can be done if you want to right here and pretty much have a good looking image but for me i really like to push the image to get the most out of the quality and so i think this is where a lot of you guys see that my stuff is a little bit different i just don't drag and drop the LUTs on i like to go a little bit further with the edit so if we go over here to balance all i'm going to do is check out my waveform so if we go under here and we go over here i'm going to make sure that my waveform is nice and bright so that i can see where everything's at so you can see that most of the image is right down here i like to have the tip of this at least touching about 896 so what we're going to do is actually go over to our curves and i pretty much do this every single time so we're just going to bump it up and then we're going to pull down in the middle we're going to pull down on the bottom end and you can already see how much of a difference that has made we're going to close our LUTs now so if i click back and forth you can see that has already made such a huge difference now the next thing i'm going to do is actually try to retain a little bit more detail from the outside now because i actually did a lot of my exposing in the curves i actually still have everything over here in the primaries completely open this is one reason why you don't want to go in and just start pushing and pulling everything over in the primaries before you've actually tried to see if you can fix the image in the curves. Okay, so if we go back over here, all we're going to do is go to our highlight and we're actually going to pull it down just a little bit. And I really like how that's looking. So if we do a before and an after, it just kind of smooths the image out a little bit more, gives you some detail outside, takes out the highlight, the harsh highlights right on the cup over here. And it really does look really good. Okay, and so we're gonna go just a little bit further. We're gonna see if we can add a little bit more saturation to the image. And so let's see what 
60 looks like. All right, I'm liking 60 so far. And so if we do a before and an after, I think that that looks really good. I don't think that's too much at all. And now we're actually gonna see if we can boost the color by five. And there we go. I think that that looks pretty good right there. And then sometimes it just depends on what you're doing. For this video that I'm posting tomorrow, I'm not adding any sharpness because I'm actually doing a lens test. So I want you to be able to see how it sharp the lenses look without any added sharpness so i'm not going to add any sharpness to this but sometimes i will go over here and i would add five right here if i just want to make the image look a little bit more crisp especially if i shot it in 1080p instead of 4k and so guys that is pretty much it that is exactly how i do it now you can see that we actually left this node open and that's because we didn't have to adjust the white balance because we shot it perfect whenever we were shooting it in camera. Now, if we go to the next clip, because this clip is in the same scene, all we have to do is right click the last clip that we color graded and hit apply grade. And there we go. It's really that easy. And you can see that that image looks so good. And now we can go to the next clip and we can hit apply grade now you can see in this image the white balance from the lights really kind of changed everything up so now we're going to go over here to our white balance node and we're just going to even this out just like that and now you can also see down here in our scopes that it's quite a bit dark so we're going to go over here to our balance and we're just going to pull it up in the game and there we go it's really that easy guys and so now because i already have my node tree structured i'm just going to go over to the clip that we shot earlier in this video right click and hit apply grade now all we're going to do is go back over here we're going to clear out our white balance and there we go it's literally that simple guys like that is a really good looking image and if i play it back you can see that it's not falling apart anywhere. It looks really good. So if you take these steps, I think you guys are really going to be able to see a difference in the quality of video that you're editing. And honestly, this is so easy. I did this in just a few steps. I think that you can really replicate this in all your different projects and get incredible looking images. Now I did use a phantom LUTs, but you can really use any LUTs to do this. And I've actually already made a video on that, but I'll show you right here, right now, how you can do it without having to buy these phantom LUTs. So if I go over here to the phantom LUT and I hit reset and we open up our LUTs up here, if we go over to film looks, they actually have some built in LUTs. So one of my favorites that I like to use is Kodak. So I just drag this one on D55 and then I'm going to close it out. And to actually get some pretty good looking images off of these LUTs, you want to crank up the saturation. You also want to add a bit more to the boost. And then you also want to go in and add just a little bit of sharpness. And there we go. It's guys, it's seriously that easy. Now you can see that down here, we're a little bit dark. So if we wanted to boost it, and there we go. It's really easy. I hope that I was able to help you guys color grade and get some good looking images with just a few steps. If you guys are interested in some more color grading or DaVinci Resolve tutorials, please let me know what you'd be interested in learning in the comment section below. And also, I recommend that you guys check out this video right over here.